Hello everyone, my name is Avkash and in this video I'm going to enhance your knowledge and experience by using the NVIDIA Instant NGP to create the neural graphics primitive such as NERF neural radiance field, STF, signed distance functions or the neural images or the neural volumes. We will start this video by loading the scene which we have already created by using a video or images. Once the scene is loaded into the NVIDIA Instant NGP GUI, we are going to process into the NERF objects and learn how to configure various mesh points as well as triangles into an active scene. We are going to export it into a 3D object while the vertices colored colors are also embedded into 3D object. After it, we are going to load this 3D object which we have just exported into the 3D object applications such as Blender as well as the Mesh Lab. These applications can load various kinds of 3D objects including the one which we have just exported. You will learn that while the Blender does not show the vertices color, however, in the Mesh Lab, you can still see the colors related to our vertices. Not only that, you can extract the color, remove and you can apply your own vertices color if that is what your objective is. So if you are watching this video, it means that you do have interest in taking your photos or the videos and converting them into the 3D objects first. And once you have 3D objects, then you have unlimited possibilities to do various things. So before we start our work, I just wanted to let you know that I have created these two YouTube videos earlier. The first one gives you lots of details on setting up your own Ubuntu machine with the NVIDIA GPU and process your scenes such as images or the videos and generate NERF content of various kinds such as STF, neural volumes and images. And the second video focuses mostly on how to trim your NERF content to get the solid object from your video or the photos. So if you have the problem understanding the content which we are going to follow in this video, I would request you to please refer to any of these two videos. Here I do have the scene loaded which was created through the video and I have already trimmed down the environment so I do have very small concise environment with the actor in the center. Now I am going to make sure that the camera properties are not visible and we can save the snapshot. To save the snapshot I just need to make sure that file name is clear whatever my objective is and then I can just click the save button which is going to save the file and we can validate that by opening the program window and we can see that file is saved and the .msg pack is the snapshot of current environment. In the next step I will be creating the mesh and then we are going to save this whole mesh as a 3D object and as you could see that vertices colors it could be either normal or the color or there should not be no vertices color at all. So various properties related to vertices color are available. Here I'm just trying to reduce the overall environment to a little lower. So some of these dust particles can be cleaned up. I'm adjusting the center so that object is in the middle and all X, Y, Z axes are correct. Okay. At this point, the, the mesh object is saved. And in order to optimize the mesh, I have to make sure that optimize mesh checkbox is on. Now I can change these values related to, to Laplacian smoothing as well as the intensity. By changing these values, you will see that there is a change in our mesh object. Now you could see that smoothening is start 
visible for us and the impact of the optimizing mesh properties is coming into the existence. At this point, we are going to maximize these optimized mesh values to the max. Changing the intensity does change the constitution of this triangle. If we could export this object into a 3D viewer, we could actually see the difference in the triangle. Now you could see that the changes of the Laplacian smoothing is also in action based on the intensity we have added. When we will open this 3D object into the mesh lab or the blender, then you can actually see the, the triangles as well as the mesh wiring to understand the impact much more clear. And now once these values are max and our optimized mesh property is checked, I will go ahead and I will save this 3D object as a object number two. So we will have two different objects to be loaded into the blender as well as in the mesh lab. Now I will change the mesh file to be part two and once the mass file name is changed, I have used the save it button to save it. So now we have two different mesh files to be loaded into Blender as well as the mesh lab. I do have latest version of Blender running and I will be loading the 3D object, which is import method. And by selecting the wavefront object file, here we are going to select the 3D object, which we have saved. And first we are going to load the second version, the one which has more triangles into it. Initially, when you are going to load the object, you might not see it early because it takes some time to load the 3D object. And as you could see, the 3D object is loaded, but because it is embedded into the cube, which was at the center. So we just need to disable the cube view from the top right list of these 3D objects or the assets we have. As you could see, that 3D object is already available, loaded, visible, and fully function. In the next step, my objective will be to actually load the first 3D object which we have saved at first and I will be selecting and the loading here. It will be loaded into the blender as an additional asset and these both 3D objects are visible at the top right corner and depending on which one is our interest, we can enable their views. So this is the first one, which has less triangles versus the second one, which has more triangles. One thing you must remember is that here we do not have the vertices color visible in the blender. However, they are there because I will be proving you when I will load these 3D objects file in the mesh lab. So just wanted to show you that how you will load the 3D objects exported from the instant and GPS nerve into the Blender. So I do have the Mesh Lab application. Latest version is running. I will be importing the 3D object which we have exported earlier. So this 3D object is the first one which we have exported through our NERF session. And as you could see here that this is the very first object which has the vertices color built into which is quite different from the blender because blender does not import the vertices color when we are opening the 3d object file so this should be very simple example for me to show you that when you are exporting the 3d object from instant ngp nerf session it does have the vertices color embedded into it and as you could see here this option shows that vertices colors are this is the mesh and this is the vertices color. 
here you have some options available for you to really try to understand how you would want to match your 3d object which is already open here here if you would want to use the user defined vertices color rather than using the original one now let me load the second 3d object which had a lot more properties into it now i am loading the second 3d object because this file is almost double the original size and here as you could see that even in this scenario the 3d model is loaded and again you could see the color and non-color and this model does have a lot more properties comparative to the previous one and as you could see that the triangles are much more clearly visible in this design versus when we have the shading applied to the triangles zooming in and out should give you the much more clarity so that's how we could really prove that exporting the 3d object as a nerf object from nvidia ngp does export the vertices color and depending on the tool which you are going to use to open the 3d object you can play with the object and also either reuse the vertices color or you can apply your own vertices color top of the 3d object so that's all i had for you in this video i hope you have enjoyed the content i do appreciate your time and i'm looking forward to seeing you in my next video until then thank you so much